Hello everyone and welcome to this virtual user summit workshop. My name is Celia and I'm a cloth 3D designer joining from our Spain office in Madrid. Um, in this workshop I want to show you a basic workflow on how to um, do a swimwear from scratch. In this case we are going to build up a bikini and I'll try to give you some tricks to help you whenever you want to create your own swimwear design. So I'm going to share my screen and hope you like it. Let's go. Okay, um, let's start. First of all, we need an avatar. So I'm going to the library, avatar folder, female v2, and I'm going to upload an avatar. Camila can work. Now we are going to change a few things like the high heels and the texture. For the high heels, if I select them both by pressing shift, I can right click and delete them. Now for the texture, it would be good not to have an underwear on. So I can go to the texture folder inside avatar, then the one with the name of the avatar I've selected. So here we see some previews of different types of underwear and then we see we have a new option. To change the texture of the avatar, we only need to do one click on the chest of the avatar. And then we just need to click and drag it to the texture tab on the property editor and here we go. Now one other thing I recommend you to do when working with underwear or swimwear is to change the pose of the avatar and spread the legs a bit. Because the fabric on the crotch must stay flat and proper and this will be easier to achieve if, if the legs are a bit apart from each other. Now we can start designing. We don't have any patterns, so we are going to work with a 3D pen avatar. This is very easy to use. With one click, we start drawing on top of the avatar skin. Then if we press shift, we have straight guides. And if we press control, we can also draw curved lines. And we get these curve points in red. To close the pattern shape, we go back to the starting point and double click. Now we change tools to flatten. We go on top of the shape and we do one click to select and enter. And then we have the pattern in the 2D window. So in the end, this is basically like modeling with paper on your mannequin in real life and then obtaining the patterns from those. Um, I am working now to do the bottom part, again shift to obtain straight guidelines and then control to create curve lines like this and then back to the initial point, okay. Then when we have it, flatten tool again, click on the shape, then enter. And now that I have both patterns on the 2D window, I can use the edit pattern tools to modify them by just changing lengths on segments points or using for example a smooth curve to change the shape. In here I'd like to have a dart so I'm creating one segment point right click and add dart. In this case I want to make it this big. Okay. Now I'm going to continue editing the bottom part with smooth curve for example, here and here. And I would recommend on the sides to do right click on the segment, on the point segment, and use perpendicular pattern corner option. So we can make sure we have a perfect 90 degrees angle here. Now I'm going to make sure I also have a perfect angle here on the crotch, in here, and now that this goes straight up, okay, and now that I have both I can duplicate them, so I'm going to select them both and do Ctrl D, so I get a symmetric copy. Now on the center of the bottom part I'm going to merge both patterns, so now I have one. And if I want to delete the drawing lines I did on my avatar, I can select them by clicking on top of them, pressing shift with edit 3D pen tool and then press delete on my keyboard or right click and delete. 
Now for the back pattern of the bottom, I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just going to um, do copy and paste <laughs> and then we can we can modify this pattern as well. Um, I'm just going to do this point here and move this up. Okay, and now let's simplify a bit here. And I'm also going to use the smooth curve tool to give it more width here. Okay, something like this. Then if you end up having a lot of segment points, remember we can always select them, right click and convert them to curve points. Now we can go with the rest of the patterns for the straps and the crotch. We don't need to use anymore the 3D pen tool. We can go with rectangle tool on the 2D window. By selecting this segment, I can see the length of it. So one click on the background and in my case it's going to be five centimeters and then 21 and a half. Okay. Oops. Yeah, this way better. <laughs> now on the side I can unfold. Here we need a connecting piece. Um, I'm going to do a tiny rectangle to connect both cups. But I suggest you could also work with a trim in here, something like a buckle for instance. Now we need the shoulder straps. So let's do one more rectangle in here. In my case I already know the length and again one centimeter. Okay. I'm going to duplicate it with Ctrl D, so I have them linked. Now for the straps on the back, we can use Surface Tape Measure Avatar to start here. One click and go through all the back. Here to the center. Okay, so we can see this length. but. It, in my case, I'm going to do it a bit shorter because we are using Lycra fabric, so it's going to be elastic. So let's say 20 centimeters should be okay. I'm duplicating this piece as well. Okay, and now we could activate the arrangement points and then, yep, arrange these pieces around the avatar for the piece on the crotch and the one in the middle of the cups. We are going to use the superimpose function. So for that we know we need to sew the pattern pieces first. So this here and now I can, I can go here and superimpose side. I'm changing to texture surface so we can see the wrong side of the fabric so we so I don't get it wrong. Now to the front okay and superimpose side again. Now we can do the same for this piece here. Now for the bikini straps that goes over the shoulder, we are going to make that they do a loop around the back strap. So for that, we are going to create some internal lines. First of all, some new segment points. Two centimeters, two centimeters, then internal lines, and here in the back straps, one internal line at 10 centimeters, and then one more at one centimeter, which is the width of the strap. I already have them in the duplicated pattern. Okay, so now we need to arrange this a bit better. And with the full tool, we are going to work with these two straps. Okay, I mean if they go a bit inside of the avatar it's not going to be that much of a problem. Okay, now with the fold tool I'm going to fold in here in this internal line. This was not sewn together. <laughs> this neither, forgot. Okay, and now I'm just going to try and put this inside the back strap so when now we sew it together it will make a loop around it. Okay, 
this one here now the other one I'm trying to do it this <laughs> quickly but it takes a bit of time okay during the simulation the straps uh, can be a bit unstable so we need to procure that we have them as well placed and fixed as we can so I'm going to sew them together this is why I needed these internal lines here on the back and it's not like it would be sewn together in real life but what we are going to do is this sewings we are going to delete the normal map or we could load down the intensity and the thickness so we don't see it as a sewing but then that way we make sure it's going to be stable now I need to sew here on the side I don't think I have any sewing left to do um, as I was saying before the simulation can be a bit unstable because they are like small pieces of pattern so we can do a few things first we can select all the pattern and strengthen them then for the cups so they don't go up while simulating uh, we can use again the surface tape measure and we are going to repeat this uh, shape so we can then attach it to the pattern so they don't move okay once we have this tape measure done we can change to attach to avatar so one click on the line and one click on the segments of the pattern and then when we simulate it will stay in here in place okay now for the shoulder straps what we can do to fix them is to add pins to the avatar one in one shoulder and another one in here once we have these things these few things done then we can simulate i tell you if you try to simulate before <laughs> maybe everything will fall apart <laughs> uh, here on the back we see these loops in here look good and are stable okay Anyway, if you don't want to see the, the orange color of the strengthening, we can do right click on the background and hide the colors. Now that we have the most important done, we can start adding details such as a ribbon for the back. We go to hardware and trims, then ribbon, and now here we want to add the garment, so the CPAC file, not the trim, um, because we want to have the patterns. So I'm adding this one I like to the workspace and now to help you place it you have this Diana here which you can use as well as the gizmo to move it a bit closer. I'm just keeping a gap here so I get to see the sewing lines are correct. Now we need to sew it for that we have these um, guidelines in here and we can draw internal lines on top of them and then we can sew the center of the back straps to these two internal lines and then we can simulate briefly okay looks good next step we are going to draw some more patterns with the spiral tool in the 2d window so we can have uh, some ruffles so i already know the measures i need to input in this window so i have the ruffles i want because I know the length of the base of the cup and I also want them to be two centimeters wide so 20 millimeters in here five centimeters and then 17 for the length okay so it would be like this I'm going to first of all load the particular distance because it's a small pattern piece then duplicate it and now we can sew them and superimpose both over Okay, now I'm going to copy and paste them so we can have them also on the bottom, but well, this is a designing choice. Uh, I'm also going to do them bigger and then sew them as well, going through the front and through the back. And I can, su I can superimpose them again and I'm going to modify the shape a bit with a small math curve. and then I can simulate and let them fall fine 
Now the next step, quite important, would be to create the lining. So for that I'm selecting the main pieces, right click and clone under. I'm placing it here and now we see, even if we simulate, it is super stable and we're not going to have any collisions or anything. Okay. Now let's apply uh, one fabric for the shell. I already have it in here in the object browser. It's a Lycra fabric and then another Lycra for the lining. Now I can delete the ones I'm not using anymore. Okay. If we take a look in this fabric, we already have a texture in the Lycra shell. But normally swimsuits and bikinis have a print, all over prints, so let's open the texture editor and add one print on top of the texture. This one we need to desaturate it because it's kind of grayish black. And now we can add another image on top, in this case a print, even though it's not an all over print, it's not a, a repeat, a repetition, but we can make it work. I'm changing the size of the canvas. Okay, making it bigger, and then I can adjust my drawing. This is a drawing I did, <laughs> just to show how we could apply it, and then we could change the blend option, which can give us different color options, like in this case, and apply and close. Now with Edit Texture 3D or 2D, we can just modify it, and we could even scale it in here. and. Okay, now for the lining and just applying one color, one flat color using the eyedropper. Okay, at this point we are about to finish, but let's add some more finishing touches. For example, I'm going to select the straps and some other patterns like these ones here and then the grudge for the shell and the lining and we're going to apply some thickness some visual effect that it, it is more thick, so it looks more real. Now I'm going to deselect the ribbon and then the ruffles and we are going to load down the particular distance for the rest of the patterns for the first time. We can simulate now and let's be careful with the ribbon because it's going to fall a lot now that it has a new different fabric. So you can decide when to stop the simulation and then select the ribbon and freeze it whenever you want. Then what else? Even though we have an elastic fabric as a lycra or whatever you choose, we can also decide to have some segments or even patterns with elastic effect applied. For example, in here, in the back center, if, if we applied elastic effect, then it looks more real. And then I could apply it in this piece in here, for instance. And yeah, you can also decide to just have the patterns with um, elastic effect. It will depend on the fabric you're using. Then I have prepared some top stitching with zigzag shape. I'm going to apply it on the lining, on the cups and then on the bottom. And then for the straps, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create internal lines in every strap pattern. Then here in the back exactly in the middle so now I can create with segment top stitch the top stitching in here and I have it in in the back so we can see it here in the inside and I also have two different types of puckering I prepared so I have one for the bottom lining and another one for the shell cups. Now it's almost done. There's only one detail left. You see we have a gap in here in between the, the avatar and the fabric and this is caused because of the skin offset of the avatar, which is right now three millimeters. 
we can load that down, but we still have a gap because of the thickness collision of the fabric. If we load that down again, we will have a better fit. Now I'm going to select the main patterns, not the straps, and I'm going to unstrengthen them. I have my cups attached to the avatar, and with the pins and the rest still strengthen, I will have a better result on the cups and on the lining, a better effect, more realistic, but still it will be very stable. And now I would like to show you a few renders I did of this same design. So I did a, just a basic uh, render, then I played with some colorways, changing the blend option on the texture editor, and then, well, you can get as creative as you want. <laughs> Um, well, I hope you like the workshop, that you found some tricks interesting and that you can use them later on on your designs. Thank you for watching and joining and see you soon. Bye!